G'day guys, welcome back to G-Man Specs. Today we're going to take a look at a video created by Wheat Waffles and the video is called Simps Will Ruin Dating for Everyone in 5 Years. Now this was 2 years ago, let's see how accurate it is. Does it stand up to the test of time? Are we going the trajectory that Mr. Wheat Waffles has predicted? The original video link is in the description guys. It's undeniable. Simping is getting worse. OnlyFans revenue has increased almost tenfold to 2.5 billion in just two years. Jesus. This man paid more on OnlyFans than he did on rent last month. Wow, oh, yeah. And you hear stories about that sort of thing, about guys spending all their money and being proud of it. I'm not sure if it's actually a thing where uh, men like to be used financially, they get off on it. Like, you actually know they're being used, they're giving all their money to somebody. They, they, they keep just enough of their pay to be you know, to, to maintain sustenance, to live and survive, but they give the rest to some chick on the internet. Like, I've heard about that. Guys giving away all their pay. It's weird shit. This is the guy here. This is the guy here who buys his wife's boyfriend a Nintendo Switch for Christmas. This teenager donated $20,000 worth of life savings to Twitch e-girls. These are some shocking numbers, but without being rest assured, it's not just these clowns who have to pay the price. Simping has huge ripple effects on the entire dating market and therefore affects everyone, including you. Boiled down, when a man simps, it undermines your value because as women get accustomed to being treated like queens, their desires from men transforms into preferences, then to expectations, and finally, entitlements. I would say demands would be one. There are many women out there. I put up a video a few days ago about the, the, the 13 Melbourne women versus the Aussie Chad. Check that one out, guys, if you want. It really shows this sort of level of expectation and entitlement and all those kinds of women who are like 3 out of 10 on a good day, majority of them, um, just downright obnoxious. And it is true. You get guys who simp or guys who pedestalize women and they do become accustomed to that because they're growing up with, and I think it's worse in this generation of women, um, or even in my generation, because the online dating, that's been a thing now for like 20 years. You know, you had all those websites and all that before the dating app. So about 20 years or more, this has been going on, where women go on the internet, very average women, and you just have thousands of dudes just gassing their heads up for years and years on end, telling them how great and perfect and beautiful they are, or taking them out on dates and doing things that no one would do in real life. No guy would come up to them in real life and do them. But you get these thirsty guys online who are doing those things. You dirty bastards at home, it's you. You're doing it, creating these problems. You know, going on Oasis Active, plenty of fish with all the dirty, filthy single mums, telling them they're all hot. They think they're all hot because of you. <laughs> and then Steve-O comes along and um, grounds and pounds them and disappears. And although these examples I've shown are mainly being benefited by a small minority of women at the top with a following, you'll see even at the lower levels, pretty much every average girl is being engulfed with attention, validation, and thirst from an innumerable count of desperate guys. Once Absolutely, and I'm going to admit, guys, when I was younger, and I was, say, look, my early 20s or whatever, and I was on those... Um, I used to go on Adult Matchmaker. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. I'm not sure if it's still around but that is the filthiest website that was like 20 years ago but i used to just yeah i used to do all these things thirst validation give them all this attention try and gas them up thinking that's what's going to get me the action but it used to work because back then there weren't as many guys doing online dating i'm like this is like in 2003 and this is that was when if you went on if you met girls on the internet that was weird but i was and i was like captain cook i was pioneering it back then it was great it was doing a lot of damage but i was doing all these things I reckon if I was to do them now, I wouldn't have those same results. It's more boiled down, the dating market is getting more and more screwed. Anyway, the focal question of this video is going to be why. Why is simping at an all-time high and continuing to set new all-time highs year after year after year? Well, I'm going to be bringing you five reasons answering this question. So without wasting any more time on the intro, let's get straight to the first. Reason one, male thirst. Yeah, you do the sad ways. reality of today's dating game is that a lot of guys think so lowly of themselves that they believe their only chance to get their foot in the door is by simping. Every I, I don't think it's that. I actually think it's like guys are actually 
indoctrinated to believe that that's the behavior that women respond well to when we guys we guys who watch your channel guys who watch this content we all know that they really don't they find it off-putting like you guys out there who've had a woman come on to you and carry on and like stalk you and stuff and want to be your girlfriend you, it's very off-putting to have that so i can understand from a woman's perspective having dudes who are sharing you with um compliments and bullshit and presence all the time you're not going to respect them so that, that that's what it is it isn't so much i think lowly of themselves it's like they're using the wrong strategy they think it's a winning strategy that every other guy is doing the year that passes the dating market gets more and more competitive this means an ever-increasing number of guys are being forced out of the market and the pool of accepted men becomes more and more concentrated to the guys at the top yeah, but how, I understand what he's saying, but let's, let, let's test the hypothesis. So he's saying that women are, are being simped on. And it's pushing up their expectations of, of the men that they want and what they're expecting to get out of dating. But even the 10%, even 20% of guys, they're not doing those things. They're not, they're not the ones that are, that are throwing out the dates. They're not the ones taking them on hot air balloon rides over the Yarra Valley for the first date, you know, taking them to a winery, spending 500 bucks for a first date. They're not doing that. They're spending four bucks, five bucks, or six bucks, whatever it is. Don't get me started on that for a cup of coffee and a walk. That's all they're doing. So I don't know if that hypothesis stacks up then if women who have been spoiled by these other men are now aiming up to get nothing at all from the top 10% or 20% of guys. This leaves a problem because for the majority of men at the bottom, their desires haven't changed. They have just as much of a will to compete as they always have had. So, in order to fulfill these desires, they've only got two options. Either grind for several years trying to reach the top 10%, which is far from guaranteed, or to simp over women and pay for their time so they notice. It's one of these two things, or you give up. And It's for not, because cause number two gets you nowhere. Like, it doesn't even get you attention. That's the thing. It doesn't get you any sort of result. Men need to understand that. Like women, women will milk it and farm it. It's like guys will farm uh, a girl who wants to be, you know, with a guy, and she'll sleep with him and do whatever she wants and all that stuff whenever he wants, any time of the day, uh, any time of the day. Of course, he's going to keep exploiting that situation. For a lot of guys, the simping option looks the most desirable it's, because they <laughs> see it not. as the easiest ticket back in the game. But of course, the problem is simping never works out in the long run. Because even if a below average guy manages to attract a top woman into a relationship this way, the woman isn't actually attracted to him, rather only for what he can provide. There will always be a power imbalance as the man has essentially said to the girl from minute one, you and your time is worth more than me, so I'm happy to make up for that with my financial contribution. Rel yeah, I think to an extent, but I, I think, you know, the black pill guys, I think they really jumped down the rabbit hole there saying that women only want to extract 100% resources from men. Uh, I don't think it's a planned thing for many. I know, I know for some women it is. But what happens generally, it's on, it's on the back end of a relationship where they get nasty. I don't think they go in thinking they're going to rip you off. But on the back end, the guys who've been divorced, hey, I've been there. They will take their pound of flesh. They will make sure they'll use the law to get their money out of you. But I don't think they go in thinking that a lot of the time. Yeah, sure, you get these women who are stuck up, you know, with all the Botox and all this bullshit, who want dates, who want men to make effort and provide and all this bullshit that they carry on about on the internet. But majority, I don't think, really are out for that. But the thing is, too, if they're going out with an attractive guy, they're not going to get a financial contribution. So that doesn't really hold up to me. Yeah, the guy has the looks and stuff. But I know women who have, uh, have gone out with guys because they look good who more or less didn't have anything going for them at all. Now, did they, was it long term? They get married? No, but they went out with him. So I don't know. I debate some of this stuff. I understand where this guy's coming from, though. Relationships formed this way have no foundations and therefore are a disaster waiting to happen. Now moving on to reason two the deceptive and misleading agenda of the mainstream media. The whole world wants men to be simps. Yeah. In preparation for this video, I thought I'd type into Google what is a simp, and I don't even know why I bothered. The results were hilarious. This article from CNN says, Simp, the new slang teenagers use to insult boys who are too nice to girls. This article was similar. 
Simp behavior is just a way of shaming men that treat women well. <laughs> Lastly, there was this one. Apparently, doing anything nice for women makes you a simp. So look, look, I'm going to have to agree. I think it is pretty overused, the word simp. What's a simp? A simp, a simp is when you are putting in a whole bunch of financial resources, effort, attention, time, emotion into a woman and getting nothing out of it. Like you're blatantly being used. You're in the friend zone. You're the friend boyfriend. You know, you're taking her out on dates, but you're never going to get nothing out of her. She never kisses you. She never, you know, shows you any sign of reciprocating those emotions at all. But you keep doing it thinking that one day she'll see that you're a nice guy um, and she'll realize what she has and go with you and you'll live happily ever after. That's what a simp is. I don't think a simp is seeing a girl that you like and going out, taking her out to a movie, taking her out for lunch, being a gentleman. No. I don't think that at all. That's not being a simp. I think that's overused. I think a lot of immature people will say that. Oh, you took a girl out for dinner. You're a simp. No, because what, what what was what was the outcome of that dinner? You know, is it a, is it your 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 woman, uh, a girl you're dating, someone you're you're seeing exclusively? So, I don't know. I do think that simp is overused. So, in each of these articles, which are the face of the mainstream, we see them equating the term simp to a man who is nice noble, kind, and generous towards women. This is a huge part of the problem. These equations are inaccurate first of all, which I'll elaborate more on in the seconds, but more importantly, since the first exposure people get about any issue or topic is almost always going to come from the mainstream, the result will be widespread bias being acknowledged by the most naive and impressionable people. Let's say an uneducated young man gets called a simp at school and ends up reading some of these articles. You could bet solid money he'd walk away from them actually aspiring to be a simp. He'd believe he should be <laughs> proud to call himself one and it'd reinforce in his- I, I don't think anyone's gonna be proud to call themselves a simp. I don't know about this guy. Guys, look, I'm gonna call it halfway time here. So halfway through, guys, if you're enjoying the content, please sub to the channel, aiming for 8k subs. Um, if you do want to support the channel, guys, just watch the video through to the end. That's what gets me out there. And also, if you want to support the channel, um, check out the Patreon. Link in the video description. In his mind, it's his duty to mindlessly hand out for women. But let me make myself clear. There is absolutely nothing admirable about being a simp as a man. Simping can be done anytime for any woman and therefore has no value. These articles show how backwards the mainstream really is. Going further, even from a young age, boys are taught to no difference. I remember when I was a kid watching scenes from Disney's The Fox and the Hound, where the male fox gives the female fox a flower in order to attract her. And though giving a flower is nowhere nearly as bad as giving away your money as a simp would, it still plants these seeds in the minds of young children that the key to winning the hearts of girls is by being selfless and generous. Now, some people might say, yeah, the mainstream does encourage simp behaviour, but now there's a growing presence of people like this guy who are saying the opposite, which therefore will neutralise the bias in the mainstream. This is a dumb argument. Because although it might be true for the moment, I promise you it'll be short-lived. I was going to be right, good old uh, Tatey, good old Andy Tate. He's uh, no longer with us, he's um, in prison or something, or, or he's going to be put in prison for all the things that he has done. Because for the major media outlets, who are and always will be the guys in control, they'll eventually grow tiresome of hearing tripe from the other side. So, all they'll do is ban these people for breaking user terms. And, speaking of which, just last week, the man on your screen is now banned from both Facebook and Instagram. And I wouldn't be surprised if the other major platforms take similar action against him. Anyway, bottom line. In future, as the mainstream media becomes more strict with what you can and can't say, it will only take less time for those who have controversial stances to have the rug pulled from underneath them. Fuck, well, I'm basically next then. That's what, that's, that's what Wee Waffles is saying. But he was trying to spot on the money with Tatey. But I think Tatey, you know, everyone's looking at him like he was this great bloke. And I think he did say some things that made sense to a lot of men. But, but that guy, look, he's there to scam people and make money out of selling courses. That's just the reality of his thing.
Um, you know, that's, I've always, that's why I created this channel, guys, to be a bit more genuine and authentic than these guys who are living this big fake life with all this money and behind the scenes he's doing all this dodgy stuff. And he's going to end up in prison for it. I'm not going to, you know, stand and say that he didn't wake a lot of guys up, but yeah, probably wasn't the role model that people thought that he was. Now moving on to reason number three, evolution. When you look at the history of the dating markets, in tribal times, the provision of resources from men was king. If you were the man that could provide the most for a woman and her kids, and protect them as well, you'd be the one to pass on your genes. Therefore, male brains evolved to be driven to deliver as much as they can for women. In other words, men want to simp. It's in their DNA. However, what nobody told men is that nowadays, things are far, far different. With the explosion of social media and online dating, I think it's quite evident looks is now king. Unfortunately... I think, I think he, he's okay to a point. So he made that... He made a good point there. So I'm sort of half agreeing with what he's saying here. I think... And he's articulating himself well. My, my view, my personal view on it, guys, is number one, I, don't, I never agree with what everyone just says. Like a lot of these people just spit out the same things in every video, every channel. Guys, I'm going to critically look at stuff. So he's talking about guys wanting to simp and provision um, resources as a bad thing. I don't think provisioning for a woman um, who you know is trustworthy for now, who we never truly know, right, guys? You never know what goes on and all the stuff I tell you guys. But for a woman, okay, let's put it this way. For a woman who is trustworthy, uh, for a woman who is going to be loyal, there's nothing wrong with provisioning and being that man. What a, what a lot of men bag other guys about is being that guy for a woman who's out dating other dudes. All right, that, that's, that, that's what a simp is. That's what wasting your money is. I don't see anything wrong with being a strong masculine figure um, and providing and um, being ahead of a household. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I think, I think it's getting, this stuff's going a bit too far with some of that. But in terms of the social media and online dating, he's saying that looks is king. I think looks absolutely is king um, for the first glance. I don't think it's debatable in any way. You, uh, even as a man on dating apps, guys, when I was on them, I'll just be swiping all the girls I thought were attractive. And hey, a lot of the time, ones that weren't attractive, you work it out on the back end, right? You just swipe on everything. But women are going to swipe the best looking dudes, the ones who are fitting the fantasy of what they're trying to find. You know, the guy in a suit or a tradie or a fireman or whatever it is, you've got a picture like that and you're meeting that type, bang, you're in. They're not reading your profile. But the point I'm trying to make here is, the reason why men now don't want to spend money and provision as much is because, yes, social media and online dating have turned that on its head because women now have so much choice and options and a lot of the time, um, especially in their younger years, capitalizing on farming as much resources, attention, dates, presence out of multiple guys at a time uh, and openly bragging about it. So guys are sort of like, hang on. I'm okay to do it if you're just my girl, but not if you're out doing it with five guys behind my back. And that stuff actually happens quite a lot. That actually happened to me when I was younger, guys. So I'll, I'll tell you a personal story. I was about 20 years old. Um, I met this girl down at the gym, and she was like a gym instructor down there. Um, you know, she was all right. She had a really good rig. So I was right into her because she had a really good rig, and her head was all right. She was a bit of a prawn, a um, bit of a paper bag job. But at the time, I was just happy to be there because she was this hot, fit girl. She was about two years older than me. So to me, she was the older woman. Long story short, I was out there taking her out for dinner, taking her out to movies, doing all those things, you know, once or twice a week. And she was out banging other dudes. I didn't find out till later because I was so naive. I thought, well, if I'm taking her out on dates, that she's my girl. I was happy to do it. But as soon as I found out and started realizing these things were happening, I dropped her like a hot rock. But that's, that's what's happening now. Unfortunately, though, the male brain hasn't kept up with these rapid changes in dating. Men's minds are still programmed the same way they would have been 20,000 years ago. So, in essence, when you look at the way men's minds have evolved, it should be obvious that there are plenty of men still queuing up for women to simp to this day. After all, it is all they've ever known. Now, in terms of solutions, the only way to rectify this would be to educate all men on these dating market changes, so they'd understand that their default urges of trying to attract women through resource provision aren't as relevant anymore. 
However, this solution would be almost impossible to implement. Because even though times have changed, you can't just undo tens of thousands of years worth of evolution overnight. And to provide evidence to this, just look at this channel. What do you think I've been trying to do for the last two years? It's been my mission to awaken guys to the fact that looks are now the most important factor in today's dating game. I don't agree with him at all. And all in all, I've amassed 11 million views, which although impressive sounding, this is still less than a quarter of a percent of the entire world's population. Anyway, this brings me nicely to my next point, which is that even if men knew they could change, would they really want to? In other words, are men blinding themselves by their own delusions because they're refusing to accept the harsh realities of modern dating? My answer is yes, sometimes. And there's evidence scattered everywhere in my own comment sections to prove that. Here I've selected just a few which showcase how staunchly in denial some guys can be. Even when... I don't know, I mean, it's like a religion. I think people take these blue, red, black pill guys. I don't take any of those. I, I don't identify as any of those things. I know you guys say my content's red pill. It's just me. I just say what I think. Now, if it falls into that category, fine, but I don't suck at all those talking points and um, stand by those like it's a religion. Uh, guys, I look at everything critically. Um, as you would have seen in my former videos um, in my channel, I'll, I'll, I'll pull apart black pill. I'll pull apart red pill. I'll pull apart blue pill. Uh, based on my own opinions. Like this guy has his opinion that looks, you know, um, based on his experience, that looks at the most important thing. You've got other guys here who are um, debating him, but he can't understand that these guys probably have different experience than him. Um, and they might have charisma, they might have game, they might have those things that get them success uh, with women. So their reality is different to his. Just because he believes this stuff, it doesn't mean it's true. It's almost like the people believe these sort of philosophies like they are a in our religion and stand by them. Slapped in the face of such glaring confirmation that looks is more important than ever in modern dating. Tragic how many people actually believe this black pill rubbish. Looks do not matter when it comes to dating. It's charisma, confidence and one's ability to flirt. Looks don't matter. Now, the explanation for why guys are like this is because men will have the hardest time coming to terms with the black pill. For some... I think I understand that, and a lot of guys spit out a lot of the things that I try and tell them as well because it goes against what they're thinking. So I, look, I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm just saying I don't really agree with what he says because he's pretty hardline that looks is the only thing that matters. Looks are important. There's no denying that, but it's not the only thing. They're going to get you so far. They'll get you, they might get you your foot in the door, but that's it. That's as far as it's going the truth is just too hot to handle. And why can't they handle the truth? Well, if a man goes online seeking the truth about dating, he's going to be exposed to many different communities. He's going to see those blue pill articles, like the ones shown earlier that say it's a fantastic idea to simp. He's also <laughs> going to encounter pickup artists, red pill self-improvement gurus, and maybe black pill too if he reaches as far as my channel. Anyway, of all of these, these top ones are the most alluring because they take the least effort by far. Blue pill? Just be nice, just buy her some chocolates and a bouquet of flowers. She'll be falling head over heels for you. <laughs> Turning up at the front door with a love heart shaped box with your flowers. Oh, I'm here to pick you up for your day. And all of you guys who Stevo's at home do that. Pick apart? Just use these copy paste texts and canned pickup lines I came up with. There's no. I don't think it's that easy at all. I've never been a PUA guy, but I think it's absolute skill. You need a lot of balls, resolve, and resilience to go through probably being rejected 99 times out of 100. I know, walking up to chicks all day and just getting told to piss off. So I think there's a bit more to it than that. Way she won't like that. In fact, it's only when we get to Red Pill when we see talk of the monstrous amount of work needed to have a fulfilling dating life. At least these gurus will tell you you actually need to dedicate some serious efforts, years in the gym, weeks in a dark room alone trying to build your career or business. And finally, when we get to Black Pill, this teaches you the importance of improvement, but it also says how crazily difficult it is to climb the ladder of success. Yes, yeah, so they don't try at all. So that's not the attitude that I agree with, guys. I'm a very optimistic kind of guy. If you put in in life, you will get out. 
yeah, you just got to try. You got to be resilient. I'm not saying you're going to get the hottest chick in the world, but you'll get something. Like, you know, what? Just give up. Just don't do it. Just watch black pill, black pill videos telling you that it's all over and not to try. You know, is that what you want to, your life to be? I mean, that's why I don't overly agree with what this guy says. I think he makes some good points, but saying give up, it's too hard. Black Simply. pill is the only ideology that teaches you you can put in all of the work in the world into improving your dating life. And there's still going to be some chads doing better than you just because they've been dealt a better starting hand. Of course. Anyway, tying this back to the original points, for all the reasons just explained, this is why you see a near perfect downward correlation between the subscriber counts YouTube channels have and the difficulty of dating they teach for guys. The most subscribed blue pill channel is psyched to go with 10 million subs. The most subscribed pickup channel is Base Zeus at 1.4 mil. Red pill channel is fresh and fit at 800k. And lastly, the most subbed black pill channel is yours truly, who's inches away from 100k, just like he also is from six feet in height. So, the bottom line of this point is that it's way more mentally reassuring to believe simping by way of the blue pill is the optimal dating strategy, as it means you as a man will never have to face the heavy truths and harsh realities of modern dating. I think, it's, I think, I think yeah, fine. Like, I understand what he's saying. I do agree with it to some extent. It's hard. It always has been hard. There's going to be hotter guys than you. Um, the taller guys, model looking guys, you have to have no effort and they get chicks, the chicks you can only dream on and, and you do work for 20 years just to get a sniff of their asshole. Um, you know, or you'd suck his cock just to get a taste of her pussy, right? <laughs> but that's, it's the same as anything. It's like, oh, well, you might as well not you know, have a career because there's someone who was born into a family business and straight away they're making millions of dollars on the board. You know, life's hard. Life's hard for men. That's the reality of it. And yes, men do like to spit out um, uncomfortable truths, but I think that's human nature in general. It's human nature across the board. I think no, it's just about red pill, black pill, and all that. Yeah, blue pill is telling uh, telling men and, and you know pushing them along a course that they've been provided their whole life, that the media has provided them, their mums have provided them, their sisters have told them about what women like. Other girls have told them what they like, so they relate to that because they think it must be true because that's what they're being told. But I'll I would probably put pickup in the red pill bucket. I probably wouldn't put pickup in its own in its own bucket because those guys say a lot of the same things that what red pill guys would say. And black pill, I haven't watched most of it. it doesn't overly resonate with me. And no offense to you, black pillars out there. Um, it's just it's my opinion on it. I'm happy to be challenged in the comments. Finally, moving on to reason five: simping has never been easier. We currently live in a time of abundance where resources are so plentiful, it's caused an arms race amongst simps. Throughout history, most men didn't have the time nor money to even be able to simp. Here's the GDP per capita graph of the US in the last 50 years. You can see the significant increase where we are now three times richer than we were 50 years ago. And this trend will only continue in future, giving simps even more ammunition to frivolously hand out. That's not the way it works, mate. There's just more people. There's more. There's a bigger population. There's more migration. Um, so this black pill dude shouldn't be talking about economics because, guys, I've got a background in finance and economics. I can tell you now, simping uh, is not a correlation to GPD, GDP per capita. To women. Previously, bullshit? it would have taken months, if not years, of saving if a man wanted to provide a luxurious holiday for a woman. Uh -huh. But nowadays, this is within reach for most guys and can be achieved far quicker too. What's more is... Well, back in the day, even like my own parents were telling me I never went on overseas holidays or anything. I think it's because travel has become cheaper, the world has become more globalised, that people can go out and do these things. Like going out to Greece or going on a yacht like these guys in the bottom left, my parents would have never done that. They were grinding it out. They were, they were um, you know, working class people. So going on a holiday and having those expectations, I was once in a lifetime thing was to go overseas or something like that. Like you'd go to some caravan park somewhere for your holiday when I was a kid. And you're happy with that. But I think, yeah, expectations of society across the board, I think it's because people are richer. I think it's because people think certain things are cheaper, certain things are more expensive. Access to credit is higher than ever, so guys can simp on women with money they don't even That's have. That's true. That's I've true. showed this data in a previous video. 
76% of guys are willing to go into debt to woo a woman. Jesus Christ. This shows how widespread simping has become. I believe, no matter what the context, if you spend money that isn't yours to impress a female, you are, by definition, simping no exceptions. Anyway, those are your five reasons why simping is here to stay and will inevitably grow even more in the years to come. If you All right, I'm going to end it there. So go check out Wheat Waffles' channel. Uh, I've been told by some um, commenters that he doesn't make videos anymore. But still go over, give him a view. Uh, give him some ad revenue. Give him a sub as well. Um, yeah, so the reality is simping has been happening forever. Wars have been fought over women. You know, you guys seen that movie Troy, um, you know, where Orlando Bloom's character is a little simp for the queen and he does a little bitch move and steals the other king's wife. And the next thing you know, fucking... There's a full-scale war over it. That shit happens. It's going to always happen. Guys aren't just going to become black pill or all red pillars. Um, or, just, or just guys who have their eyes open. Um, I don't like putting labels on things, as you guys know from my other videos. But a lot of guys aren't going to wake up. 90% of men uh, will live their whole life head in the sand until they cop a really bad divorce, guys. A really bad... Or a woman doing things that they just never thought that a woman would be capable of. Um, and they get to a point where they're, they're, their whole world, their whole notion of the world is just blown up. They can't understand it. Um, that's what started my journey many years ago. Um, and that wasn't even with my divorce or anything like that. That was just through dating and womanizing and just seeing what the fuck happens out there. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll end it here. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.